We are excited to report that we have survived week number four of the No Shopping Challenge. Barely. That's an entire month of not going out to shop for the foods we love or going to Taco Bell. Hi, we're the Provident Preppers. Week four of the challenge went surprisingly well. It makes me want to sing. Zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. And no, our parents didn't let us off the hook. See, I bet you're wondering how we got our hands on this delicious bag of chocolate chips. Our creativity and resourcefulness continues to astound and amaze our folks. Join us for the nitty gritty details. Welcome to our report on week four of our 90 day no shopping challenge. You'll have to excuse Jonathan today. He had an emergency with his work, so he's unable to be with us. So I get to give you the rundown. These kids are amazing. If you remember at the end of week three's report, Christy was petitioning for more chocolate chips which I thought that was fine, but I really didn't think that anything was going to come of it. Our daughter-in-law, who had broken a few ribs, needed some more help, and so these girls went and helped to take care of her little ones for a couple days. And they came home with this bag of chocolate chips. She paid them for their efforts with a huge bag of Costco chocolate chips. They were so excited. It amazes me the resourcefulness of these kids. So let's get a little bit into week four because I have a special surprise for you at the end of this video. Our grow tunnel is so beautiful. It's just a fabulous way to grow a whole lot of food in a very small space. This is one of the morning harvests and that's how we decide what we're going to eat. We see what's ripe in the garden and we plan our food from there. We planted more fall crops. This is in our big garden. Last week we planted more in the kitchen garden. This one we planted another row of beets and another row of carrots. We were excited about these volunteer potatoes. Earlier this year I had decided I wasn't going to do such a big garden and that was well before we did this 90 day challenge and so I didn't plant any potatoes this year. I thought we'll just buy them in the fall from one of our local farmers and I was so excited when we were preparing the row for the carrots to find a volunteer potato plant and these gorgeous potatoes under just one plant. We have a few pluot trees in our yard and they are young, but this is the harvest off of one of the trees. They were so delicious. I wish we had more, but we enjoyed what we had. Christy and Ben are harvesting plums off of another tree here and we're gonna make something delicious with them, I'm sure. We do breakfast from the basics a lot. This breakfast is made with dehydrated hash browns, which are surprisingly delicious, and we have a lot of them in our food storage. Fresh eggs from our chickens. We made an applesauce cake in the sun oven. So it turns out to be a really delicious breakfast just using the basics that we can produce and have stored. One of the most difficult things about this challenge for us is the inability to pick up fast food when we want to. And we have a lot of traditions in our family that revolve around fast food, which is surprising because we didn't think that before we started this challenge. One of the best alternatives to fast food for us is to start food in the slow cooker in the morning so that it's ready to eat whenever it is that we are hungry. So this day was karate testing, which is a really big deal. And I took some of those new potatoes, some peppers and onions, and then covered them with meatballs. And I just put the lid on and let it cook while we were gone. And we left for karate testing, which is about a three hour physically intensive workout. So when the kids are done with karate testing, they are starved. Our tradition in the past has been that we take them out for a fun meal and just enjoy that time and celebrate their success. On this day, our celebration was cooking at home in the slow cooker just waiting for us to get there. This is Christy and she has just broken a board with a running jump kick. During karate testing all of the kids do a combination where they are breaking boards and we're going to show you Christy's because there's something really important that I want you to recognize in this routine.
that on her first attempt, Christy missed the target on the board by just inches, which resulted in her falling back and hitting the mats. Christy didn't miss a beat. She got back up and she nailed that board. And that is what we want to teach our family. That's what's important about preparing and being ready for the future is that we are always going to have challenges in life. What's important is that we get back up and we conquer whatever the challenge is. We have learned that community is our most valuable resource. Ben is trading for milk every week. And so this week it was beets and carrots and that's what we had to trade. And in trade, we have fresh milk. My mother-in-law called me and said that she had elderberries that needed to be picked. And Ben and I were so excited. Well, I, I was probably a little bit more excited than Ben. The recipe that I have for elderberry syrup takes important fresh ingredients that I didn't have on hand, but due to its medicinal properties, it was really important that I had these ingredients. So I made my mother-in-law a deal. She went out and purchased the fresh ingredients that I needed. And in turn, I made her elderberry syrup. So she brought the jars over with the ingredients and Ben and I went and picked the elderberries and we were able to create this wonderful batch of elderberry syrup. She benefited because she <laughs> received the syrup already bottled and ready to go. And we benefited because we were able to get the ingredients that we were missing in the first place. How do these kids do this? This is some chocolate ice cream. Again, our friend Angel showed up with a quart of delicious chocolate ice cream. And in exchange, we gave her a copy of our book that she has been wanting. So again, it was a good trade. I think that we got the better end of the deal this time. On Monday morning, I received a text from Charisse. This is one of my favorite bean recipes. I'm sure you're eating lots of beans these days. And she's right. And so it was really fun to have a new recipe. Go check out the Cooper Scoop on YouTube. Charisse and her family have a really fun YouTube channel and you can see some of their adventures. Best beans ever with coconut milk. This is the recipe that Charisse sent us. And the little problem with it is because it's a new recipe, it's not one that I had all the ingredients to. I don't normally keep coconut milk on hand or I have never even tried red curry paste. And so I didn't have all of the ingredients to make this recipe. And I thought I'd probably just look up some substitutes and see what else I could use. A few hours later, Charisse shows up at our doorstep with the ingredients that she knew I would be missing. I think it is amazing the care that we have in our community and how people work so hard together to take care of each other. And now we have a delicious new recipe using basic staples and because of this, I'm going to start storing coconut milk along with Thai curry paste in our food storage. One of the things that this challenge has taught me is that I need to be able to understand exactly what I can substitute for ingredients that I don't have. And many people don't have the source of fresh eggs that I do. And quite frankly, sometimes my source of fresh eggs can dry up. So I decided to write a post on 25 shelf stable egg substitutes, things that you can use in a recipe to substitute for eggs that are all shelf stable. One incredible egg substitute is called aquafaba. Aquafaba is the liquid that you drain off of your canned beans. Historically, I have drained that liquid down the sink. I won't be so quick to do that anymore. Aquafaba liquid can be used just as it is to substitute for eggs and recipes, or you can whip it and use it to substitute for egg whites and recipes. And understanding aquafaba allowed us to create this delicious chocolate mousse from basic food storage. I would highly encourage you to go visit that post and see what things you can use to substitute for eggs. It might be a good idea to just print out that egg substitution post and tuck it in with your recipes so that you have that information when you need it the most. We work really hard on the providentprepper.org to make sure that you have some good foundational resources to help you be better prepared. Check out Prepper Pantry, 25 shelf-stable egg substitutes for baking. 
that's the one that you should print out. Google the Provident Prepper, 12 ways to prepare to survive an economic collapse. What we're doing right now, it is surely helping us prepare. And finally, the Provident Prepper 90-Day Challenge survives solely on food storage and garden. And you'll see the resources that we began this challenge with and the rules of the challenge. As you can see, things are turning out much better than we had hoped. But next week we'll be back to school, which will present us with an entirely new set of challenges. As you can see, donations are always well received. We'd especially love a little more ice cream. Chocolate chip cookie dough for me. Mint chocolate chip for me. And fudge tracks for me. Now for the question of the day. Do you think we should have to bring everything from home? Or do you think we should be able to eat school lunch? Please tell our parents to let us eat school lunch. Please, oh please, oh please. We're growing teenagers. And, and thanks, thanks for being part of the solution. solution.